this is Terry Malik, uh, here, right here in Denison, Texas, at Epiphysis. I'm the owner of Epiphysis, which is a holistic healing and educational center. And we are here to help educate people along their own journey of healing through body. <laughs> To, you know your dimensional travels okay. this is weird for a lot of people but we're talking about you growing up being a rebel uh, then all of a sudden from being outgoing to uh, this dynamic young woman to you just shut yourself off and then just wanted to be invisible why because I always knew I was different as far as picking up things from other dimensions even though I didn't understand any that age but I always knew it was very different than everybody and I was able to manage that very well when I was in a place of confidence or strength. However, when I started having more and more health problems and I had to be, you know, I had to wear this brace which was, you know, pretty, people were pretty aware, and pretty visible, it was pretty visible. Even though I had clothing over it, it was still pretty obvious. I just, I, I felt like the outside, okay, this is a good way to put it. The outside reflected what I already felt on the inside, that I'm in a very different world and I don't belong. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this can be the title. This, whatever you just said, can be your, yeah. your like theme of the yeah, title. Yeah, it is my theme. And I just, that's why I said, wow, this is a good way to put it. The outside started reflecting what the inside already felt. It felt it felt invisible. Okay. Yeah. And the outside couldn't be I, I felt I felt like I couldn't be invisible. Anymore. Anymore. Because this Because now I had something attracting visual attention. Yeah. And so I had to find other ways to make myself invisible by withdrawing from society and from people and completely going into my own shell. And how long did you do that for? I did that for, well, started it in fifth grade. And okay. I did that all the way until I was about a sophomore in high school. Long time. Mm, long time. And that still took about three more years to really, until after I graduated high school, to really shake a lot of that. And what did you learn in that, isolate, at that time of isolation about yourself? Or was it complete negativity? It was not complete negativity. Honestly, I don't know that I learned a whole lot during that time. I learned it way later in hindsight, looking back. But at that time, all I was I was on autopilot. I just wanted to get through. That's all I wanted to do was get through. I wanted I I every day felt it was a lot of negativity. A lot of um. A lot of people may not have known it, but a lot of depression, a lot of sadness, um, just no confidence and very low self-esteem, which I had not experienced before. So this was a whole new world for me. I'm suddenly in fifth grade and, and back my very first day to school with my brace. The one boy I had a crush on made so much fun of me. You know, brought me to tears. Now, I know that may sound, you know, people may, oh, kids bully kids all the time. But it affected me so deeply. Yeah, because you had a crush on that yes, boy. Yes, so and deeply. And he had been a friend of mine for since kindergarten. Yeah. And suddenly, oh, I'm not good enough? You know, I can't even be your friend? It was very painful. And I just decided that day, I said, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be around people anymore. 
I did not like to be around people anymore after that. So I spent many, many years getting by when I had to be in society. And just withdraw back yeah. in, in yourself. Oh, yeah. And that's what created more physical problems because when we bring it all into ourselves, it manifests. And you suppress it. Yes. I suppressed it and suppressed and suppressed. And I, I, I actually got so good at suppressing my emotions and feelings. And when I say that so good, I don't mean that as a good thing. <laughs> but I got so good at doing that. Like outside world would have no clue. No, no, very even. I don't even think my family had any idea how yeah, bad I was. Girls are a little bit more better at doing that. Yes. Women are, uh, very true. I've actually watched a lot of documentaries and videos on that where they actually explain that females are much better at adapting in social settings. Um, you know, that have any kind of, where whether it's autism, whether it's... Um, you know, depression, anxiety, if, if any of those, any of those conditions where we can actually um, suppress it to be suppress to be. it and put up, a, they call it the chameleon effect. You can just put on an act or put on a show, so to speak. And so um, that is very true. I think females, female, I, I think they are better at it, but I think it's because society that accepts it more from females. They really do. They kind of just look. This is how it was viewed by a lot of people. Oh, she's just an emotional teenager. She's just a teenager. A little, she's just a girl going through puberty. She doesn't know. You know, so that's how they write it off. They don't realize it's way more than that. So there was this emotional storm going, but Absolutely. the outside world expected you to be a girl who's just changing her hormones. She's just an yeah. emotional kid going to school. Uh -huh. But, and then you really accepted that and suppressed it and then yes. just acted along the way for a couple of years several, yeah, till several you years. couldn't do it anymore yes and then I got so good at that that even when I was able to put myself out there again mm -hmm. and go out and start hanging out with people and partying and being the rebel that was still going on inside but outside you're like smiling outside and I'm like life is good I feel great now and I got so good at it that when I went through traumatic times, which I did uh, when I was 20, and then later I went through, a few years later, I went through some other traumatic times. Um, Can I have the age range yeah, at that time? Yeah, um, at 20, I went through, a, a, I was attacked and I was actually stalked and threatened for my life. Who, who was that? Um, it, Are we talking about a human being? Or? Yes. Uh, yes. No, it's a good question. It's a very good question for me, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, because you're... It's a very good question. I have to laugh at that. Um, because I appreciate that question because most people would not even... Yeah, because I know that, that. you... you We're going to go... By the way, guys, I mean, she travels dimensions. This is a mm -hmm. whole new level of human being we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I'm learning a lot from you. But... So that's why I asked yeah, you, like, it was a question. human being. So it is. This was a, a male, a human being. Okay, I some guy who fell in love. And he physically attacked me. Um, and then threatened, pursued to, proceeded to threaten me and my family. So I drew in even more. Why? Why did I draw in? No, I mean, why did he attack you? He was in, what, what, was, what was up? Um, well, that's just his own. <laughs> no, no, he, um, yeah, there you go. Express no, it. Tell, I, tell us. She was, he was all of a sudden okay. in love with you, okay. and you were not going to go me, up with him? Is no, that? that's, a, that's a, okay, let me shift into that place so that I can answer that. What I have come to learn, I didn't know then, I didn't understand it, um, he was going through some very, very traumatic times, and unfortunately that's how he, uh, he focused his energy on the negativity that he was going through, and that's how it manifested. And there I was, you know, somebody in his life. He did have... Uh, he very much, I definitely, it's definitely not love, but he had this um, kind of this obsession with me that if he couldn't have me, nobody could type thing. And, um, you know, so he, and I, at that time, I was in a relationship, in a new relationship. And did you, did, were you guys going out? And then you saw this guy was not stable enough, and then you like, okay, I need to get away from this, and you started dating somebody. Absolutely. He got weird. Absolutely. This is what happened? Yes. Okay, so you guys were yes. in, in, in a... We, we were, but it was just 
friends, really. It was but really he took serious. it very seriously. Yes, yes. It was just kind of hanging out, going out, meeting a rebel. Oh, this is a bad guy. I'm going to go out with him. He's a bad guy, you know. You know, that'll make my dad mad. I'm going to do that, mm -hmm. you know. And that's where I was at 20 years old. So, um, but yes. But it I, went into a it, completely it went, different level. It went to a very different level and a very dark, troubled level for me. And um, so, yeah, he. I it now, in many years later, after suppressing it for over twenty years, and that affected you. Oh, affected me so badly. Why? I mean, yeah, he attacked you. He, did he physically beat you up? Yes. It was really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, he raped me okay. twice. This is coming. Yeah. All this is real. Yeah. So this is okay. Real. You're not the. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people There's are gonna a lot of people. look at this and be like, oh, whoa, okay. Yeah. And. But because he threatened my life and my family's life, I did not do anything about it. You didn't say tell tell anybody no. about it. So I lived with this for <coughs> over twenty this years. Truth. This was. A, this, this is real. Ah, real. Very dark truth. This is a this is a truth. Yeah. There was and at that time I'm sure going to a psychologist or going to a somebody there, <laughs> there there was nothing like that probably. I did no I did I you went did? to psychology to, to a psychologist and a psychiatrist. Um. I walked out with treatment because this is and then you know mind you I'm getting a degree in psychology at the time and what I that's when I started researching holistic healing way back then before it was really any close to mainstream because I realized this isn't how I want to help people. I don't want to just say, read in a book and go, oh, well, you fit into this category, so we're going to give you this pill and it'll just make it all better. No, that does not take away what happened. Okay, now it, it connects the dots. A girl in her 20s being rebel against her mom and dad, mm -hmm. got into this trouble, this weird guy comes into her life, emotional stuff, unfortunate things happen, mm -hmm. directs your life to this healing completely, you trying to find your own healing path, Absolutely. you fall into this yeah. spirituality yes. all of a sudden, right? Yes. So, it, it took a long time. Oh, uh, okay, definitely. So, but a lot of years, yeah. That situation in your 20s. Yes. Okay, that happened. Okay, so now we're going to the next situation. What's up with that? Um, I didn't even know that it happened. But when I was 23, um, I lost a child. Okay. I did not know I was pregnant. I did not know I lost a child. I went to the doctor. I, I had certain, you know, symptoms that created significant pain and discomfort and so forth. And I went to just a, like an emergency care center. And I lived in Colorado at the time. And I had just moved there from Texas. And so they kept telling me, no, no, I still live here. I think it's all. It's you're all feeling the emotions together. when you're. Uh, yeah, I still live here. I moved a month away. So I lived here. Yes, I am. Uh, this is good. Yeah. You, you, this is good. Like, this is what you taught me last time when I was here, when we were talking, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, you have to get past your fears yeah. to be able to go to the next level. Absolutely. This is what you're doing right now. Absolutely. I mean, after this... I have written about this in a book, yeah. which I have been apprehensive to...